Hello everyone, this is BB Sanmay and in this video, today I am going to discuss about fluctuating stresses. So do subscribe for the upcoming videos of machine design. In many applications, the components are subjected to forces which are not static but vary in magnitude with respect to time. The stresses induced due to such forces are called as fluctuating stresses. It is observed that about 80% of failures of mechanical components are due to photic failure resulting from fluctuating stresses. So here in the video you can observe that many of the automobile machine parts or automobile components are subjected to fluctuating or photic type of stresses where they are repeatedly subjected to various uh, intensity and various amplitude uh, stresses. So the earlier failure of component is uh, may occur in case of automobile components which are subjected to fluctuating stresses. In practice, the pattern of stress variation is irregular and unpredictable as in case of stresses due to vibrations. For the purpose of design analysis, simple models for stress time relationship are used. The most popular model for stress time relationship is the sine curve. So here in this video, you can observe that many of the automobile components are there like piston connecting rod crankshaft even the wall springs are subjected to fluctuating type of and cyclic type of stresses here i have shown in this video that how the uh, springs which are used in the inlet exhaust walls are subjected to various uh, fluctuating type of stresses according to the speed of the engine okay so uh, while designing such components we need to consider the repeated type of fluctuating type of stresses and in this type of stresses the premature failure of component can occur okay so to avoid this how the design calculations for the fluctuating type of stresses we need to un understand there are three types of mathematical models for cyclic stresses that is fluctuating or alternative stresses repeated stresses and reversed stresses the stress time relationship for these models are illustrated in the given figure okay the fluctuating or the alternating stresses varies in sinusoidal manner with respect to time so here i am going to draw i am going to plot time on x axis and the stress on the y axis The fluctuating stresses has some mean value as well as amplitude value. It fluctuates between two limits that is maximum and minimum stress. The stress can be tensile or compressive or partly tensile or partly compressive. So here I am going to plot the fluctuating stresses in a sinusoidal manner. Here you can see the curve. Here the top peak portion of the curve represents from the zero line it represents the maximum stress so this is the maximum stress the bottom portion of the curve bottom bottom most uh, portion of the curve represents the minimum stress this is the minimum stress the difference between the maximum stress and minimum stress is the stress amplitude it is the sigma a so this is the sigma main and there is one more that is sigma min which is the average of sigma max and sigma minimum that is maximum stress and minimum stress so this is the curve for fluctuating stresses similarly for the repeated stresses the stress varies in sinusoidal manner with respect to time but the variation is from zero to some maximum value so here once again i am going to plot the time on the x axis and stress on the y axis so here you can see the sinusoidal curve for the repeated stresses okay so the top most part of the curve it is actually it represents the maximum stress here this is the stress amplitude okay 
and the minimum stress is zero at here and the mean stress is the average of maximum stress plus minimum stress by two so this is how the repeated stresses this is the behavior of repeated stresses similarly the reverse stress varies in sinusoidal manner with respect to time but it has zero mean stress so in this case half portion of cycle consists of tensile stress and half portion consists of compressive stress so here you can see that this is the max at stress amplitude okay the half portion is positive and half portion is negative the positive portion is uh, it is the representation of tensile stress negative is the representation of compressor stress so this is the how uh, reversed stresses behave now let us discuss about the fatigue failure it has been observed that materials fail under fluctuating stresses at a stress magnitude which is lower than the ultimate tensile strength of the material sometimes the magnitude is even lower than the yield strength further it has been found that the magnitude of the stress causing fatigue failure decreases as the number of stress cycles increases the phenomena of decreased resistance of the material or fluctuating stress is the main characteristic of fatigue failure now let us examine a phenomena we have experienced in our childhood suppose there is a wire of 2 to 3 mm diameter and we want to cut it into two pieces without any device okay so uh, without any device like hacksaw or cutter now one method is to shear the wire by applying equal and opposite forces p1 and p2 by left and right hands but it is quite difficult to cut the wire by this method so what we can do the second method consists of alternatively bending and unbending the wire for few cycle let us consider two diametrically opposite points a and b on the surface of wire so first of all i am going to bend the wire in the downward direction i'm going to apply the bending force so you can see the bending force which i have applied okay so after application of bending force the wire will it will look like this okay and the topmost portion of the wire i'm going to call it as a and the bottommost portion of wire i'm going to call it as b so here the portion upper portion of the wire is going to it, it will be subjected to tension and the lower portion which is i have represented by the negative b letter it is subjected to compression so this is how the uppermost fibers are subjected in tension and as you we will go to the downward portion of the wire you can observe that the lowest power portion or the downward portion of the wire it is subjected to compression so again once again i am going to bend the wire in reverse direction okay so similarly i will bend the wire in reverse direction so in that case it will look like this and the previous portion that is plus a which was subjected to tension it will be subjected to compression it will be minus a and the portion which was uh, previously subjected to compression which was represented by minus b it is again subjected to tension okay so uh, a reverse type of stresses are there here okay cyclic type of stresses are there sometimes they are uh, compressive type and sometimes they are uh, tensile type okay so therefore uh, there is a complete reversal of stress from tensile to compressive stress at point a due to alternate bending and unbending similarly at the point b is subjected to reversal of stress from compressive stress to tensile stress during the same cycle so we have experienced that the wire can be cut very easily in a few two to three or three to four cycles of bending and unbending 
okay so after three to four or four to five cycles of bending and unbending you can observe the cracks present over the tens uh, area which is subjected to tensile force okay so do, within the three to four cycles the wire we can cut the uh, wire we have expressed that the wire can be cut very easily in few cycles of bending and unbending so this is the actually fatigue failure and the magnitude of stress required to fracture is very low in this case okay so uh, in other words there is a decreased resistance of material to cyclic stresses so that is nothing but the fatigue failure so the fatigue failure is uh, defined as time delayed fracture under cyclic loading okay so examples of parts which are subjected to fatigue failures are common uh, that are used for the, the transmission the transmission shafts connecting rods are there as we know that the connecting rods are uh, subjected to tensile and compressive stresses during the uh, suction and compression stroke okay uh, gears are there vehicle suspension springs are there okay ball bearings are there so many mechanical components are subjected to uh, cyclic type of loads uh, with the loads which uh, change their uh, uh, magnitude uh, with respect to time okay so uh, the fatigue failure is the uh, it is actually the time delayed premature failure under the cyclic loading okay there is a basic difference between the failure due to static load and due to fatigue load the failure due to static load is illustrated by simple tension test in this case the load is gradually applied in case of simple tension test the load is gradually applied and there is a sufficient time for the elongation of fibers in ductile materials there is a considerable plastic flow prior to fracture this results in silky fibrous structure due to uh, the stretching of crystals at the fracture surface but on the other hand uh, fatigue failure begins with the crack at some point here you can see that the critic fatigue failure begins with the crack okay at uh, this uh, surface which is subjected to the uh, tensile force okay uh, the crack is more likely to occur in the following regions uh, the region of discontinuity such as oil holes key weights, screw threads etc the region of irregularities in machining operations such as scratches on the surface, stamp mark, inspection marks, etc. Internal cracks due to the defect in materials like blow holes. So already in the previous video, I have shown the images of these. These regions are most likely to subject to stress concentration due to the crack. The crack spreads due to fluctuating stresses until the cross section of the component is so reduced that the remaining portion is subjected to sudden fracture. So there will be a sudden fracture there are two distinct areas of fatigue failure uh, first is the region indicating slow growth of crack with fine fibrous appearance and second is the region of sudden fraction with a coarse granular uh, granular appearance so in case of failure under static load there is a sufficient plastic deformation prior to failure which gives the warning well in advance but on the other hand, uh, fatigue cracks are not visible till they reach the surface of the component and by that time, the failure has already taken place. So the fatigue failure is sudden and total. Okay, It is relatively easy to design the component for static load but in case of fatigue failure, however, it depends upon the number of factors such as number of cycles, mean stress, stress amplitude stress concentration, residual stresses, corrosion and creep. So many factors are responsible for the fatigue failure. So this makes the design component subjected to fluctuating stresses more complicated. Okay. Thank you.